So we are coming up the bumpy road of my buddy Andy Hickman's house that he built. He doesn't no longer owns it. But this is the North e the famed Northeast Georgia Earth Home. So this is the north side of it, the back side of it. And you can see the uh, walk around in the front, but you can see this thing. Um, first thing you have here is on the ground, what are these things? These are these are the cisterns and the cleanouts for the rainwater catchment. So he's got, oh, they're huge, huge tanks. He can get down inside of them. He's got cleanouts where he can get down in them and clean them out. And then he's got this heavy duty rainwater catchment system. And then these are intakes for um, uh, an air, kind of like a air recovery system. Basically he can pull in air through the ground and pull it into the house. Now, I don't think it worked very good, but probably would have worked great in New Mexico, where this is, you know, these airships are New Mexico design. Then we got the wood stove flue. I love how his roof's flat enough where you can just walk up on it. It's decked in plywood, so you're not going to crush anything. It doesn't have any kind of purlins underneath. It's all solid. This is where the battery box is. I didn't love it. It's heavily insulated, and it's got pond liner around it. And uh, I do a maintenance on this in another video. But this is where they put the battery box on Earth ships. I'm not a huge fan of that location, but, you know, whatever. It's outside. I guess it's a good idea. Um, and it's heavily insulated. This is the flue for the on-demand water heater. This is like probably satellite internet or something. Just venting. These are interesting. These are like these trays filled with gravel, and they're ballasted. And on the front of the house, there's a sunroom. And when the sunroom starts to get too hot, you can actually open these things up with a, uh, a rope inside the house and vent out all the excess heat of the earth ship. There's your mini split. This right here, you can't really see it, but this is the conduit run for the solar. And there's the combiner box. I think there's a little sub panel there. And this this will get you right into the house. And then there's some electrical coming in through here. And the 200 amp service comes in through that LB right there. So I just wanted to go over real quick what what's going on on the on all this stuff because this is this thing is not just a house folks it's a machine see it's all burned into this hill this is a seriously alternative construction and it took this guy Andy five years to build this place out of they built it out of pocket and they ended up selling it it's a seriously cool place and you can look at it on Facebook and I'm just meeting with the new owner go over some stuff. They Before they sold it, they tied it to the grid. It was totally off-grid before, and so I'm just gonna kind of help them figure things out. So this is the Northeast Georgia Earth Home, and uh, I had the privilege of putting the, the Magnum battery backup 48 volt power system on this thing. It originally had a DC power system and an AC power system and a little 12 volt DC microgrid. Now it's just, it's been changed around a little bit, but it still working good it's been a pretty cold winter here in north georgia nice frontal view of this alternative construction hippie dream no, i'm just kidding it's a cool house it's super cool um these are those boxes i was talking about on the top these are like ventilation shafts so down inside the house he's got like a rope system with some uh, they look like the things you tie boats up with. Can't think of the name right now. But you can basically, these trays are kind of ballasted up top for so they're really well balanced. And you can pop these open and vent this sunroom if it starts to get too hot. Now, in my opinion, this is way, way overkill for where we are. This probably worked great in New Mexico. But where we're at, you, he's basically going to have to shade all of this in the summertime and turn this solar off instead of trying to vent out the excess heat he just needs to never let it go into the house so this is a crazy amount of south glazing you know south window that's going to harvest a lot of heat in the winter time but it's also going to harvest a lot of heat in those uh, spring and fall months when you don't really want the heat in there and you don't really need heating or cooling in G georgia during those months and this is going to cause it to work in reverse so he's going to add some shade sales the owner is and i think that's really going to help him out he's going to just do some shading um, this is the original solar system that he put on it it's kind of weird the way it's laid out another solar contractor actually came and put this in and uh, we redid it and put the panels almost really close together there was a big space in the middle 
Uh, I don't really remember how it was, but it was kind of weird. I think we added two panels or something. But um, he's got roughly 2kW of solar, and then we're going to add an additional 2kW to this other roof, which you'll see in a second. That's going to be the summer array. Of course, this array is really steep, so that's the winter array. And that'll probably be enough power for this house. The homeowner said that they're using 28 about $28 worth of electricity in the very coldest months right now, which probably half of that is the meter fee from Georgia Power. So a house like this requires hardly anything. You can cool the whole thing with a mini split. It's very, and uh, you know, I'll take you inside later. Thanks for watching. So, the homeowner tells me that his power bill has been like $28 and $30, which half of that's like the metering fee. And uh, this thing is built like a, a brick, you know what. So. Uh, a lot of features on this thing. If you want to look into passive solar or the earth ships, you can watch the documentary Garbage Warrior, where this guy Michael, I don't remember his last name, but this architect in New Mexico designed these things. And it's got everything. It's bermed into the house. It's got rainwater catchment. It's got bottle walls. It's got filtration systems, gray water. There's gardens inside, off-grid power system. It just goes on and on and on. Wood heat, mini split air conditioners. It's just off grid like it ain't nobody's business. And you know, he, they sold this house and the guy moved, the guy that built it that knew all the systems left. So uh, I'm just going through with the owner how everything works. I did not mount these panels. Actually, I remounted them. Somebody else mounted them originally, kind of weird. So I made the best I could, but hopefully, we're going to add on a ladder roof pitch summer array and this that's going to be for air conditioning and such this house faces directly south and heats up really nicely in the winter he said it was 20 degrees outside when it snowed and it was 85 in the sunroom area and 70 in the main living area so this is a really cool structure a little bit extreme as far as the style goes but you know whatever floats your boat I think it's super cool. It's very cool design. Hey YouTubers, listen, if you like that video on the kind of the exterior tour of the Northeast Georgia Earth Home, stay tuned because I'm gonna be going inside in the in a couple of weeks or so. I'm gonna be doing some work and I'll give you a tour of the inside of it if the homeowner will let me and just kind of show you how the systems work and it's a very cool place. Make sure to like and subscribe this channel and we'll keep trying to bring you lots more solar and off-grid lifestyle. Thanks. Thanks for watching.